If you guys would like to pick up any of the figures you see in today's video, go over to ringsidecollectibles.com and use the promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%. What is good, everybody? Welcome to an Epic Mod Am Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have a brand new 2-in-1 WWE Elite figure review on the brand new WWE Elite Series 80 Eric and Ivar Viking Raiders War Machine War Raider Viking Machine Raiders. You guys know all the different damn dag team names these guys had, but I'm so excited for these figures, man. I mean, I feel like we've seen them forever. You know, we got the images like months ago. We had like the little render images, and then we finally got full final images of them, and we know how how damn good they looked and I am just these guys right here are going to be up in your top figures of the year if, if you do a top 10 which we will do on the channel these guys are going to be very hard to compete with because of how damn good they look now are they going to be as good in the hand are they going to feel good in the hand how is their posing how is their you know articulation can we move them we're going to find all that stuff out and I can't wait to get into it but we have the Viking Raiders here today and you guys can see the front viewing window here first time in the line for these guys we actually got elites first instead of basics that's that's kind of rare I feel like they we always get like a battle pack first and it has been like years i swear to god these guys have been up on the main roster forever and we've been waiting on these guys forever so let's shut the hell up and dive into it guys spinning them to the right you have eric and ivar on the side on the back you do have nice images of them and this as well as a bio read if you want to read it pause it now rest of the figures in the wave which we're going to review here another images of here these look like live event images i don't know like the camera quality maybe it's just because it's their entrance but they this, this looks like it's from a live event or something but that pretty much does it for our packaging guys let's go ahead and crack the viking raiders out of their viking packaging so here are the Viking Raiders out of their packaging, guys, and my God in heaven, do they live up to the expectations as far as the looks are concerned. I don't think you're going to have any issues with that, but I know you guys have a lot of questions regarding these figures, and I cannot wait to get into it with you guys, but I think since, you know, they are a tag team, they do everything together, I'm just going to review their accessories and their figures in the same capacity. We're going to do this review a little bit differently than we usually do things, but let's go ahead and get into their accessories. Now, it's kind of weird. I want to go ahead and do it in this segment because it is very odd. I want you guys to see exactly how you do this. So we do have the helmets for these two guys. You have Eric's right here and then Ivar is over here and they don't really like sit down hard on the figure. They kind of just rest on the figure's head. So let's get down in here and showcase this a little bit so you guys can exactly see what I'm talking about. So see on this on this helmet right here it doesn't really I guess you have to like push this down in the back but it doesn't necessarily fit the figure's head. So you pretty much just kind of sit this on the head and then it just rests there. It doesn't really grip the head like a hat or anything like that. And then the same thing is for Ivar. So if you take his hat helmet right here, it just kind of rests. This helmet fits Ivar better than Eric's fits him. I think that Ivar, I think that Eric's like circumference of his of his helmet would fit better if it were a little bit larger. But this helmet goes on here like that, so it just kind of rests on there. Great details on this, man. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous how detailed these are. But you have like these horns on there. Like, just look at this sculpt, dude. Like, the wings on there and the nice horns on the sides. And you have these spikes on the sides here in the metal and the green and the studs going on. I mean, these are excellent. These are so sick, dude. Like, oh my goodness. Then you have Eric's over here. Similar type design. It kind of has like sheep slash lamb or, or goat horns on it. And then you have like the silver studs coming off or the spikes. And then you have the red details on there. And then you have this nice little piece coming off the back. I think this is supposed to be cloth or hair. I think it's supposed to be hair that's, that's like molded to this, but it is a hard rubber material in like a light whitish cream color. And you guys saw, like, this is what I'm talking about. The circumference of this should be a little bit bigger. It probably fit the figure better, but it does just go onto the figure and it just kind of sits on there. And if he's standing up, since he's leaning back, it kind of falls off, but it will fit on the figure nicely. But that is their helmets. They also have their shoulder pads, and you guys can see all this detail that we got going on. You have, like, this cross hatch material or whatever going on. It does unclip in the back, so if you want to take this off, it just unhooks like so, and then it would pour into the back to put it on the figure. And it's actually a soft material. It's not as hard as you would think. So that's pretty good there. So for Eric, it is on the right shoulder. And then for Ivar, it is on his left shoulder. And Ivar's is a bit larger because Ivar's a little bit larger guy. Same sort of pattern here. His is more of a black color while Eric's is more of like a grayish color. And they are opposites or it's like a darkish brown leather color. It does port the same way. It goes into the back right there. And you just put it over the figure. Same material, same everything like that. I don't think they're the same size. Yeah, they're definitely uh, different sizes, which is good. They need to be different sizes. I was just thinking maybe 
you could put them on one figure like that, but I don't think that would work out too well. But there is that. You also have their waist wraps, which would be the last form of their, their little uniform here. Now for Ivar, I don't think this is supposed to come off. I think this is supposed to be a part of his lower attire, so I'm not going to really get into this. We'll get into that later on, but I don't think this ports off because I think he wears this in the ring, so we're just going to leave that for now. And I don't think Eric's comes off either, so we'll probably have to take a look at this when we get into the figure itself, but they do have their little wrist gauntlets over here, and Eric has the left wrist gauntlet, and Ivar has the right wrist gauntlet, and they are in different colors. They match their shoulder gear, and they do have the nice same like cross-hatching pattern going on. They fit on the figure nice. It goes around the forearm and kind of grips on there, and it doesn't like clip on there. It just kind of rests on there, so it's easily removable, so that is something to take note of. And then out of the packaging, they do have their entrance hands, so you have like the rock and roll hand on Ivar. He comes with two of those. And then out of the packaging, he has his mic holding hands, which are always great. And then the same goes for Eric. So Eric has these same rock and roll horn hands or the devil horn hands that you would see. He's got his nice tattoos on there. And then he has one right mic holding hand and then he has the other mic holding hand with the tattoo since he is tatted up all the way, looking pretty John Brown good. But that is pretty much their accessories. Pretty cool. I like the entrance gear. Since these figures are so detailed, I'm not like, you know, putting a lot of investment into the accessories like we need so many things. I think their entrance gear works perfectly, but I guess now that that is said and done, guys, let's dive into Eric and Ivar themselves. So diving into both Viking Raiders, guys, I guess we can start off with Eric right here, and this head sculpt is pretty John Brown good. I like it. You know, usually I'm not for expression faces, and I'm sure we're probably going to get a non-expression face later on, but this Eric head sculpt is really, really good. I like the war paint on there. I like the sculpt of the beard. I think it looks just like him. I am a big fan of this head sculpt. I think it's one of the better head sculpts they've ever done, especially with Ivar. I think both of them turned out really, really good. Uh, getting into his chest here, he has his beautiful chest and stomach tattoos. I want to say these are colored. Like, they have more color than this in real life, but, you know, uh, I'm not getting any of that in here. You do get some color over here on the arm tats, but in the chest tattoo and on the stomach and stuff, you don't get any of that color in there. He also has all of his other tattoos. I'm pretty sure this is a Honky Tonk Man or uh, Jim Duggan torso, which fits the the figure good. You know, I'm not complaining about it. I think it looks all right, especially covered up in, in tattoos and stuff. You have all of his other tattoos going on over here. Black wrist tape, really nice stuff going on. He's got his back tattoo on there. He also comes with this massive elbow pad that just falls right off the figure, so I'm not sure what that's about, but the, yeah, the elbow pad does not grip it at all. It just falls right off, but you have this going on. I don't know what that's supposed to say. I don't know what his tattoos mean or anything, but he is covered in them, and he looks good. I like the black wrist tape. I like the, the little waist wrap or the belt right here. Again, I don't think it comes off. I'm sure you could get it off if you wanted to, but it doesn't unplug or anything. It's got all the gold studs on there, the leathery material. You have uh, the cross on there. I mean, dude, the paint detail is sick. It, it just looks so sick. He has the split trunks in the brown and gray. All the different decals on here. I mean, dude, they literally put all the attention into this figure and it shows. I think they did a really good job on this with the sculpting and everything. This guy is not on ball joints, so if you guys were wondering, he, uh, Eric is not on ball joints. I think this leg side works for me. I'm not complaining about it. He has these brown knee pads that are open and they do have black on the back. He does have, unfortunately he, he has been diagnosed with Johnny Gargano syndrome and so he has the short kick pad mold with the longer legs up here which looks totally odd, especially from afar. It just looks odd. I'm definitely going to have to switch this out and I'll probably put the feet of this figure onto other kick pads but we will lose this right here. I mean I could probably paint on the brown and these little letters or whatever this Viking language is on the side of his boots, but I'm probably not going to do that. You also have the logo on the left knee pad there, but yeah, I, I definitely do hate that, you know, we do have that Johnny Gargano syndrome there, but you know, it's still a badass figure, man. I, I really do like the way it looks and everything, so that is Eric, and now we're going to take a closer look at Ivar real quick, and this one is nice, bro. I mean, it's the same thing. Both Viking Raiders, I think, would be very proud of these figures of themselves. So for this head sculpt, you guys can see you got all of his nice beard going on. Ivar's beard is super long, and this this beard is stiff, bro. I thought it would be like kind of soft. No, like look at that. I can literally, it's got so much stiffness to it that I can rotate his head just by holding the beard, barely. I'm not even gripping it. I'm just barely grasping it. And so you have the face paint on there. You got the nice beard and likeness. You got the grungy face there. If you guys are wondering, his ab crunch isn't really hindered by the beard at all, so they did a good job on that. He can crunch all the way forward. He can crunch all the way back, and the beard doesn't play a role in that. He can also rotate his head side to side so I don't, I don't think this beard really hinders articulation in 
any way possible. This torso looks really good. I think this is a Big John stud torso, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong about that, but it does. It's, it's giving me a Big John stud torso vibe, at least. That's the vibe I'm getting. Nothing on the back there. He has, uh, does he have any tattoos? I guess he doesn't have any tattoos. That's crazy. I could have sworn he had tattoos, but I guess he doesn't. There's no tattoos on there. The arms look good. It's like the Luke Harper arms. He's got his brown elbow pad on there, black wrist tape. He does have his little kilt or, or his waist wrap or whatever you want to call this. I mean, dude, look at the details in this. You have the cross with all the Viking lettering and symbolism. You have his little skirt kilt thing here that does uh, just like, look at that. That looks like genuine leather. You have all the gold studs. You have the crossing and the stitching pattern inside of it. I mean, dude, they just nailed it. And he, then he has his shorts underneath in the brown and the black, the little split colorway that we get. He's got his open knee pads. My uh, left knee pad does have a little paint chip. Not the biggest deal ever, but uh, he has leg tattoos right there. Look how colorful. I mean, that looks so, oh, dude, that looks so mean. Look at that right there. That is, dude, that is sick. Maybe that's what I was thinking of. I knew he had tattoos, but I guess they're all on his legs. He also has the paint detail on the back of the elbow pad right there. You guys can kind of see the split stuff we got going on right here. Is that my knee pad split in half? Oh, no. Oh! Oh! Oh, no! Oh, my God in heaven, no, Brad. My knee pad just tore in half. Christ. Well, there's that. That just split on me, so that's nice. But you do have the short boots that look good. They have that leathery look to them. They look like his boots. And if you guys were wondering, this guy is on ball joints. So, big man Ivar is on ball joints. He can do the complete split seats. And I'm going to be honest with you, mine feel a little bit loose. They're not, like, terrible, but they are a little bit, like, they're definitely not super tight, so I'm probably going to have to fix that, but God, this figure feels really good in the hand. I feel like they always do good on the big guys, dude. The big guys, they take care of those dudes. Like Otis, like remember how good Otis was and stuff like that? I mean, dude, they, they definitely take care of the big guys, but there is Ivar, man. Really impressed with the way these guys move around. I think articulation is not going to be any issue. You can literally, you can put this guy in any pose you want, I'm pretty sure. Ball joints, torso moves good, arms move good. Really impressed with this figure. I think everybody is going to enjoy the way these guys pose around. Now, as far as your figure comparisons guys go with these guys you know we don't really have much to compare them to because we've never had their battle pack or anything like that so here they are up next to you know their goof pals their tag team partners their freaking rivals whatever the hell street profits in the house and Ivar is only 6'2 I thought he was taller than that he's 6'1 Eric's supposed to be 6'1 he's clearly like 6 foot or 5'11 compared to this figure because he's supposed to be 6'2 he's 6'1 he's clearly much larger Montez Ford is 6'3 I think and he's standing right at the same height and then Angelo I I think it's supposed to be 6'5 or 6'6 six, six possibly. So that, that they seem to scale pretty decent except for Eric over here. But overall, you know, uh, God, I hated their feud. Their feud, golf tournament, basketball, garbage, and then the ninjas and all that garbage was just garbage. Garbage. Anyways, that does it for your Viking Raider figure comparisons. But, but yeah, that is your Viking Raider football figures. But I think that is going to pretty much do it for my 2-in-1 Elite Series 80 Viking Raiders action figure review. If you guys would like a shout-out in a future video, do not forget to comment down below and leave me a like on the video. Huge shout-out to CCW Wrestling for a comment on our last video. He says they lied to us about the ricochet scan with a let-down face emoji. And you know what, Brad? They sure as hell did, didn't they? They lied right to our mouth. He had like a smirk slash smile showing teeth, and then they said no. They took it away and gave us the old ricochet head skull. But we are going to be reviewing viewing Ricochet possibly tomorrow, so definitely stay tuned for that. But overall, my thoughts on these figures, guys, is they are immaculate. They are absolutely worth the pickup. Where would these guys rank in our Elite Series 80 ranking from worst to best? We'll have to find out together, but overall, I really, really enjoy these figures. I think they pose around great. If you're a fetter, if you're a stop-motion artist, you just like to collect ultimate detail WWE figures, these are great. You will have a fantastic time with these, no doubt about it. If you guys would like to pick these up, you can go over to ringsidecollectibles.com. Use promo code MD Toys to save yourselves 10% when shopping over there. Tons of great stuff going on. I think their Halloween sales even still going on, so you definitely want to check that out. But overall, my Viking experience today was absolutely fantastic. So thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.